Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the first lore read. Today we're going to be looking into this lore book right here, The Lawless Frontier. A scorned path. Surviving is a whole lot easier when your enemies are dead. It was Electris, the machinist, who had been hoarding the servitors, and Rexus, the hangman, who slaughtered them at every turn. Two allies driven by opposing forces. One science in the making of faith, the other rage in its unrelentlessness to push to destroy. There had long been tension between the two. Ed Rexus had, more than once, slipped in the machinist's workshop to inflict himself on the servitor's cage there. Thick rule of fanatic, their spiritual leader and one-time Archon priest, watched patiently as their rivalry grew. He saw strength in their ire. He saw fire and fury, but also more, a new path onward. One that would join their passions and drive them further, a whole stronger than its warring parts. Thickrel waited, biting his time as tensions rose and threatened to splinter the Baron's loyalties. Only when Electris could take no more, on a night when she caught the hangman preparing to slaughter her latest hall of lesser servitors, did Thickrel step in. Thickrel mentioned to Electris and said, Bring me a servitor. As Rexus hissed with anticipation, she hesitated, but Thickrel was patient. Where is your trust? Electris released a servitor from its bondage. Fickrel motioned to the servitor closer. He turned to Electris. You have gathered many, machinists. Hundreds, maybe more. Our own supply? Our life force fed by enslaved mechanics? Electris nodded to the servitor as it inched closer to the Archon's open arms, welcoming the once revered orb as one would a child. The other Baritans began to bark, rhythmic warriors chant. For the value in your work, it is not enough to feed ourselves. Fickrel hugged the servitor. There was a tenderness to the embrace, a sorrow. We must also starve our enemies, as you were once starved. With a blur, Fickrel's arms lowered, unsheathed, and triggered a pair of polished, sparkling shock blades, as we were, as we all. As were we all. The servitor, still ha held with the clutches of the Archon's powerful upper arms, cried a shrill, digital wretch. Pain mixed with confusion as the blades carved its outer shell and plunged deep into the core of its systems. Ether hissed and sprayed. Fickrel released the machine's silent shell, and it clanged lifeless to the ground. He turned to Electris. Don't, do you see? Electris smiled. What, she was ever the brightest among them. Through her focus could lose clarity when she became frenzied. The Barons had long been trouble for the Awoken and Fallen of the Reef, but that trouble had been limited to a hit-and-run tactics. What Fickerel had just presented was a new way. Fickerel stepped to Rexus. Do you see? The brute barked in response. Kill them all! Fickerel laughed. Not all, Hangman. Just the ones we do not need. The Barons cheered as Fickerel continued. Every servitor, any servitor bound to a house is now a target. Until none remain but those upon we feed. A gift of madness. The song of the grinding stone calls like painted sirens, shrill and uneven. Its melody is a warning, yet still they come. Adventurers, bounty hunters, scoundrels, and unwanted. Here they find purpose, or hide these worlds beyond. Those polite lands which heroes strive to reclaim, there is no reclamation there. The shore is ever wild, and so it shall remain, ever the broken land where madness dwells and violence reigns. The questions no one asks. Was the bomber always mad, or was he driven to it? Was the madness a gift, or a curse? Did the struggle for survival outside the structure and the ritual of the house system crack his mind? The things he'd seen. Done? The shore asks most of these who call it home. Most simply find their end through the harsh will of the harsh lands, or by the hand of the hardened agent who stalk its fractured expanse. Bandits, cutthroats, cannibals, woken patrols, guardian heroes. There are billion ways to die among these jagged wilds of the tangled shore. To challenge those odds is a snow moth smoke <laughs> is a no small feat. To do so while maintaining self, rare still. However, 
It isn't also possible the bomber was this all along? Mad. Deranged. Eager to inflict destruction. Lustful for the chaos and death to follow. The seeding of the accretion fields. The bombing of the origin libraries. Kanik's handiwork has been linked to numerous tragedies, both as a rogue enemy of the Reef and in league with his scorned brothers and sisters, whom he grew strong, whom he found the purpose he once lacked. These points, an examination of the birth of madness, I raise to address a lingering concern. Seeing the awoken libraries, speak to the Cryparks with knowledge of the Reef, to the shore, scourge the records of the bomber's deeds, Feel the pain of those who suffered the fire of his devastation. Remember the fields. Weep at the unimaginable loss when the libraries fell. Allow yourself the comfort of knowing the sinister creature is now dead and gone by the guardian hand. But linger on victory's pride for only a short while, because the truth I seek to tell has yet to be revealed. And it is this. The mad bomber is dead. Canix is no more. Yet the shore remains untamed, despite valiant effort, despite your incredible strength. And if the shore remains tangled, its edges ever shifting, ever dire, then who else may drive it to madness? First long-lost survivors of the fabled Golden Age, then stray awoken and discarded fallen. Maybe next the warriors of the light, guardians. After all, more will surely come. And with more, however righteous you may be, the odds shift further in the shore's favor, in the favor of madness. And if not another guardian, why not you? The lonely and the dead. Out here, the lonely fall in the company of those bound by the purest need. Survival. Find this truth, if not your heart, in your mind. If not your mind, then your soul. The deepest part of you that connects to the most basic truths. To live for tomorrow. You have to fight for today. Know this. Understand it. Live it. Find those like-minded survivors you can look to as kin. Only then can survival be within reach, because to walk the shore unbound is to invite death. The Sad Story of Eldred Rush I tell you of Eldred Rush. He didn't come out of this way looking for trouble. He ain't a fool either. He knew trouble waited. He just didn't care. Couldn't, some would say. Eldred was a prospector of sorts, digging around these parts in search of memories. He considered gold. He had a mission, personal and pure. Find the rock which this people fell. Some tell that he was first a guardian to walk this deep. It's not true, but if it fits his tale, it makes for a better legend. Lonely Eldred walked these last lands cycle upon cycle, avoiding conflict when he could but always hitting back when push came to shove. He was a gentleman, but violent when riled. Eventually, he found a spot where ancient survivors of an ancient collapse huddled and died. There, at the sight of all, he had lost. An old life that was long since beyond his grasp. Eldred buried the dead he could not remember, but felt in his heart. Never saw Eldred again. No one did. Gotta do more than shoot. A lot of things to consider when sizing up a gunfight. Most just focus on the steely eyes and steady nerves, and those have value, but the best slingers weigh so much more. The light in the sky or the lack thereof. The temp and the breeze, how cool, how warm, which direction is the wind hitting and how hard. Further still, the ground beneath your boots, is it solid or soft, shifting or slick? All elements that speak to the moment of truth. The wear of the holster, the feel of the grip, but first and foremost, the best slinger will ever pick a fight with unfamiliar tools, unless the situation dictates an unavoidable outcome, or those instances when honor comes a calling. Hey you, yeah you, thanks for following, subscribing, doing whatever you have to do, but I really appreciate you, and thank you, because without you... I wouldn't have this channel. I wouldn't have the drive to do what I have to do every day and enjoy doing it. So I really appreciate it. And yeah, if you haven't followed already, hit that follow button and subscribe.